Lucky 13, Survival in Space by Richard Hilliard. Think about the title before the story is read aloud to you. Lucky 13, Survival in Space. What do you think Lucky 13 means? Why do you think that survival in space was needed? Just like many boys growing up in the late 1930s, Jim Lovell read fantastic stories of space travel published in adventure magazines. He could not have imagined that one day he would be in a battle for survival far away from the planet Earth. Jim grew up to be a U.S. Navy pilot and was chosen to become an astronaut in 1962, just as America was entering the space age. This was a time of incredible achievements in space technology. On December 24, 1968, Jim was one of the first three astronauts to orbit the moon in Apollo 8. Only seven months later, men from the Apollo 11 mission would walk on the moon for the first time. After the historic success of Apollo 11 and Apollo 12, NASA selected Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert as the crew of Apollo 13. They were to be the third group of astronauts to land on the moon. Jim and Fred would explore the moon's surface, while Jack would monitor the mission from lunar orbit. Even though 13 was considered an unlucky number, all three astronauts felt fortunate to be part of the mission. On April 11, 1970, Jim, Fred, and Jack were strapped into the command module sitting atop a mighty Saturn V rocket. They waited as the clock counted down to liftoff. When it reached zero, five giant rocket engines roared to life, carrying the three men away from Earth. The astronauts' families and people from miles around the Florida launch site watched as the three men sped toward the moon. As the rocket stages containing empty fuel tanks were discarded, the command and service modules turned around in space and latched onto the lunar module, which would carry Jim and Fred to the moon's surface. Jack carefully piloted the command module during this critical docking maneuver. All systems were go for landing on the moon. Back on Earth, the technicians at Mission Control in Houston, Texas, watched closely. Their monitors and communications with the crew of Apollo 13 showed everything going smoothly. After the successful docking, the flight director ordered the crew to carry out some routine procedures that would prepare for the moon landing. The date was April 13th. Suddenly, outside the command module was a violent explosion. Precious oxygen was pouring out the side of the service module, and the spacecraft began to lose power as well. Within minutes, Jim knew that he and Fred would not be able to walk on the moon. As the situation became clear to the men, they realized that unless they worked fast, they might not make it back to Earth safely. Jim told Mission Control, Houston, we have a problem. As soon as Mission Control fully understood the situation, the team quickly focused on how to get the men back to Earth in the badly crippled spacecraft. One of the primary oxygen tanks in the service module had exploded because of a defective electrical switch, and they realized that the explosion had damaged the batteries powering the command module as well as the oxygen supply needed for fuel and life support. Mission Control determined the only thing that could keep the crew alive was to use the lunar module as a lifeboat and modify its systems to support the three men struggling to survive in the cold vacuum of space. Mission Control and the crew of Apollo 13 were not the only ones dealing with the deadly problem. Back at home, their families tried to cope with the reality that the men might not make it back. Jim's wife Marilyn stayed in constant contact with Houston and hoped that, against all odds, her husband would return to her and their children. Whatever the outcome, she and the other family members knew that the NASA team was doing everything possible to bring the crew back safely. The badly damaged ship orbited once around the moon, using the moon's gravity to turn toward Earth without using up precious fuel. From the window of the lunar module, Jim looked at the moon. He knew that he would never walk on its surface. They were still a long way from home, and nothing was certain. Thank you. 
As time slowly passed, more problems became apparent inside the Lunar Module lifeboat. The three-day journey began to feel like a lifetime. Jack had to modify one of the air filters from the command module because the oxygen levels were dropping dangerously low and Fred showed signs of a fever from a minor infection. Because the computer had to be shut down, Jim worked with pencil and paper to make the scientific calculations that would bring them home. With Earth getting closer and closer, the men had to prepare to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. Going back into the command module, the three men brought the ship back to life, one step at a time. Separating from the service module and later the lunar module, the command module began the fiery descent back to Earth. If their calculations were incorrect, they could possibly skip off the atmosphere or burn up upon re-entry. Also, if the explosion had damaged the module's heat shield, they would not make it back even if their calculations were right. Millions of people all over the world held their breath as the three men hurtled through the atmosphere. During re-entry, communication with the spacecraft was impossible, and the minutes silently ticked by. The tension felt by everyone at Mission Control suddenly erupted into thunderous cheers and applause as the spacecraft appeared on the big video screen, the module's three giant parachutes safely lowering it to the gentle waves of the Pacific Ocean. Back on Earth, Jim, Fred, and Jack were welcomed as heroes and reunited with their families. The ordeal of Apollo 13 proved that teamwork could overcome nearly impossible odds and that humankind's exploration of space would continue despite the dangers that would surely lie ahead. <laughs>